Hi, welcome to this video. My name is Hayley and I'm going to be talking about freelance writing today. There's a lot of information out there on freelance writing, but I find it's very American based and nothing is really tailored towards Australia. So hopefully this will be quite helpful. Um, I know that when I was starting, I really struggled on where to go and actually where to start. I started about eight years ago when I was 21. Um, and then I stopped because I went traveling and all these kinds of life things happened. Um, I also worked full time at one stage as well. So um, it was difficult to find the time and now I'm back at university, so I'm just trying to get into it again. But I thought I'd share some helpful tips that may be of some value to people. The first and foremost thing is to read and research. So read blogs on freelance writing. Do your Google searching um, to start with. Try and find a lot of things that are tailored towards your style of writing um, and your country especially. So Freelance Writing Australia is something that can, just typing that in Google, that can set you off on the right track. But don't be afraid to read things that are overseas as well because they can contain um, similar information. And listen to podcasts. There's a podcast called So You Want to Be a Writer. It's featuring Valerie... Um, Chu and um, Alison Tate. They are both Australian authors and they also have a website called um, Australian Writers Centre. They release a podcast every week and then bi-weekly is a shorter podcast about writing, freelance writing, interviewing Australian authors, all sorts of things. And they also have a newsletter so that can help you get into the uh, genre or the uh, field that you want. They also um, on the Australian Writers' Centre have short courses and workshops that you can attend. So there's lots of information to get you started there. I'll link that um, below as well with all the information. There is also this, um, I'm reading off of my notes. Um, there's this book that I wanted to address called Writers and Artists Yearbook. This is the 2015 version, but I believe that there are um, versions of this every single year. I recently ordered the 2018 one from Book Depository. I'll link it below as well if you want that. But this is full of lots of information about newspapers and magazines, for example, books, um, theatre, uh, art and illustration, societies, prizes and festivals, digital and self-publishing, if you're into that, um, resources for writers and copyright and legal, um, so just about making sure that you don't basically copyright someone else's work. Finance for writers and artists, so how to get money basically and what you deserve. Um, and then there's just an index at the back. This is UK, so Britain and Australian based. It has loads of information in it um, on different publications, fiction, um, writers festivals that are coming up it's literally your bible when it comes to writing in all genres not just freelance writing and it's australian and uk so it's going to be tailored to exactly what you need another quick book that you might enjoy or maybe can borrow from the library is called the style manual for authors editors and printers and um i actually got this when i studied journalism um a few years ago and it's just all about grammar, um, concept, um, textual contrast in writing, um, all kinds of information, um, publication, your styles and your headings, your pictures, lots and lots of really good um, information here in here. Corporate writing, copy for websites, all kinds of things that you can find um, really really helpful in your journey. Um, so they're two books that you could probably pick up if you're just beginning and you're wanting to get more Australian based. This is Australian based as well. It's got the Australian government symbol up there. Um, and it can help you maybe get into the publishing industry or start your free freelance writing journey. The next thing is to start writing. Just write, write, write as much as you can and find 
your voice. I have had a blog for over 10 years. Um, it started as just my personal thoughts and my personal life and journey. Um, it's my full name. I've just left it as that because um, my name is basically my brand, <laughs> so to speak, as an author. I've been, I've um, edited it over the years. I've changed it. Um, all sorts of things have happened. I moved to Tumblr to do more creative writing. I had a moment on Wattpad as well, which is like a fiction um, thing. Wattpad is great if you're into creativity um, and you write fan fiction. Fan fiction is a great way to flex your skill um, and kind of get a feel for what voice you are. But in saying that, um, Wattpad is full of lots of One Direction fan fiction and um, really sexual content basically. Um, and the quality of writing is pretty low. So you'll stand out if you um, have good quality writing, but you're putting your work out for free and um, it's also hard to get, you know, the way you're going to get noticed is if you have a character that's like Harry Styles from One Direction. So keep that in mind. Also journaling, I have been journaling since I was a little girl, um, on and off throughout the years. I'm, I have a journal in my early 20s which I ended up burning <laughs> because it contained really um, moments in my life that I wanted to forget. Having a conscious stream of thought without any judgment um, has been really helpful in my writing and that's why I have a more personal style of writing and um, focus more on uh, intentional living, personal development, that kind of thing um, because I have just formed my writing style around that because of journaling and start writing for fun. Get into the habit of it, you know. Maybe you can take half an hour or an hour every day just to sit down and write for fun. If you have a book in mind, if you have an, a um, story in mind, start writing it. A few years ago, we put on a fringe festival uh, play, which is a festival in South Australia, and we called it Tinder Surprise. We wrote it, we directed it, we financed the whole thing, and we acted in it, put on a whole theatre show. It was great fun, it was a great process, and we ended up being able to do it because we held each other accountable. So we had weekly meetings, and we had to go because we had to write it. And we'd spend, I don't know, maybe two hours after work, um, finish our day jobs, go two hours after work, do it then, go home for dinner or, you know, go home at eight o'clock or something like that. And it was just once a week. So hold yourself accountable. Maybe you can um, form a writing group or maybe you can get your partner or your family or your friend or someone to hold you accountable. Create a meeting for yourself. But the most important thing is to get into the habit somehow. So whether that be and write, write anything, write that's why I start a blog. That's why I encourage everyone to start a blog because it just gets you into the habit. My blog is going more towards portfolio now because I'm trying to change it up again. But in a few years time, it might change to something completely different. I'm just flowing with whatever is going in my writing journey. The next thing is to join a center or a group. This kind of alludes into what I was saying before about holding yourself accountable with a group of people. So in Australia, there is a lot of centers you can join. I believe every single state has a center. Um, and then I think there's sub groups in that. Lots of libraries. So your local library probably has a writer's group or an author's group or even a book club. Please join a book club if you're a writer. It's so crucial and it's so helpful because you get to actually talk about characters and writing structure and all sorts of different things. It makes you a better writer in general, not just for freelancing, but for novels to critically analyze um, scripts um, and books and articles. When you get that cap on and when you get that thinking that way, you start to become a better writer yourself because you either don't want to make those same mistakes or you want to purposely do what that author did very, very well. Lots of these writing centers actually offer opportunities in publishing and um, ongoing publishing work. So I know that when I was a member, because they have memberships as well. So when I was a member of SA Writers Center, for example, South Australian Writers Center, I got 
uh, a newsletter of all these different um, publications and opportunities to have my work published, whether that be a once off in um, poetry competitions or short story or um, ongoing publications that you could submit your work to. There's lots of different ones that you can look at. So I will definitely, I'll link all of this below all the writer centers. South Australian Writer Center was in particular very helpful for me when I was first starting. And it is still is helpful for me. I still look at the opportunities that are coming up, whether that be a pitching in a manuscript or um, publishing an article somewhere. It's, it's all there for you. You just have to get it, print it out, um, pencil it in your calendar, do whatever you need to do to get you started and get your foot in the door. Joining these centers, writers groups and book clubs is a great way to network and meet like-minded people. And networking is one of those frowned upon kind of things, but freelancing in Australia is such a little group of people. Um, there's not very many um, that are in it, if that makes sense. It's a really niche group. So when you meet people in your local area, you get to know them and you get to talk about what you love, which is writing and freelance. And maybe you meet someone that's really good at photography. And then next minute, you know, a year down the track, when you've completed your editing of your book or whatever your creative project you're working on, that photographer can come in handy and you can pitch and say, hey, like, um, I want to get a cover going for this book. Uh, can you help me out? Um, if you're not going the traditional publishing route, that is. Or you meet someone who has been in the freelance writing field for, for 20 years and knows people or knows connections and, and they say, hey, send me through some of your work. I can send it on to someone else or I can help you edit it. Or, um, you, you know, when you're in the group of the workshop, you actually get to read your stuff out sometimes. So say you've got a great hey, I've written this great piece that I think would be fantastic for um, the, a magazine or um, a newspaper that I think I can pitch in. And then you can share that piece and people can give you feedback. And it's a great way to get um, lots of different angles and lots of different opinions on your writing and where you can improve or where you can work on more, what needs strengthening, where your weaknesses are. And that's another thing is be open to criticism. You're in a field that is going to be criticized. So be open to it. It's okay. And editing is your best friend. So don't be afraid of it. Have a big smile, have fun with it. Um, if you get criticized, then take it with a grain of salt. You know, okay, this person didn't like my particular writing, but that doesn't mean I'm a bad writer. That just means that that person doesn't like my style. There's so many articles and books and literature out there that just aren't right for people. I know people that don't like Harry Potter. These people exist. <laughs> the next thing is to find even more opportunities from there. So take the time in your own time to find opportunities. So I recently found that Wellbeing Magazine, which is a magazine that I read, accepts, public, accepts written publications and accepts um, blogs as well. The blogs they do for free, but the others that you can potentially get published, they pay you for. Um, so they're called contributions. So find magazines that can allow you to pitch in contributions to the editor, and it depends what you're writing on. For well-being, it focuses on healthy living and a more natural, holistic lifestyle. Um, I have a certificate in naturopathy, so I feel um, that I can write to this particular audience. And I also am heavily interested in mental health because I went through a lot of depression and anxiety in my life. And I feel that I can use those tips and tricks to help other people because I've lived it. It's part of my ethos. So, um, or part of who I was, part of my character, if you want to say. So I can give that information, but what, What's really helpful is when you're looking at these opportunities um, and you find, say you find a print magazine that accepts um, contributions like Wellbeing Magazine and you think to yourself, well, I don't know anything about natural living. I don't know anything about mental health or being, being a better person, which most people do know and most people have a story to tell, whether it be a personal story or a friend of a friend. But say that's not the right niche for you, then don't write it. Don't write, don't force yourself to write something that you 
don't enjoy or you feel like you have to research to the nth degree because it won't be enjoyable for you and you'll feel that like you're overwhelmed and that you can't do it and then you'll just won't write. Write what for what interests you and write what you know about. You might be um, have a background in science or um, a background, I'm trying to think, a background in um, geography. So maybe Australian uh, geographic is where you should pitch your work or you might have a great photography skill. Okay, well, if you're good at photography, can you write about travel or um, nature photography in your writing? Say you go camping or you go out to this beautiful place and you can write a story surrounding this particular photograph. With photography, it's great because um, if you attach a story to that, you can actually earn even more money because publications will generally pay you for the photograph as well as the article. So keep that in mind. Pitching. Pitching to an editor is an art in itself. You've written the article, it's ready to go. Maybe you've got photos attached. You're pretty happy. Like You're like, yep, I've edited this. I'm, I'm happy with the voice. I'm happy with that I've connected with an audience. Always write for your audience as well. Keep that in mind. You have to write to an audience, not just to yourself. Think would people want to read this? <laughs> That's a question you should ask at the end. And if you, if the answer's no, don't pitch it. Anyway, pitching is an art in itself. When you pitch to an editor, you're not the only one pitching. So email them, attach it, um, write a little bio about yourself and write what the article is about. Give a really short synopsis of what it's about or what the manuscript about is about or whatever. In news writing, there's um, the inverted pyramid, which means, so it's like that, which means you put the most important information at the top and then you go down to the least important information. So the most important information in this case is your article. What are you writing about? Who are you? And so on. <laughs> but the most important thing is what are you writing about? What is this article about? Who are you? Pitching takes a while to learn because you also have to have a really strong heading sometimes that is really eye-catching rather than saying, I, I mean, I generally wouldn't open this email either. So think about it, you know, you pitch it and then in your heading of your email, you write contribution to magazine. No, like that doesn't tell me anything. Tell me about the article. Start to get creative with the title of it. Man survives rock fall or something like that. I don't know. Try and get something going um, that's going to be, oh, I'm, I'm interested in that. Um, you know, it could be, uh, I'm trying to think, camping for five days, no shower, or um, traveling New Zealand in a camper van. Um, something, just something that tells you what the article is actually about, maybe your personal flair on it. If you're witty with words, you're in the right industry, oh my God, because wittiness is going to get you far. But it's also about each, each place you pitch to might have a different audience and might have a different tailored voice. So keep that in mind as well when you do pitch. They're just a different voice. Whereas something like we are explorers or um, National Geographic or Australian Geographic has a completely different voice um, and you need to be an active reader of that to be able to know what their audience is and what their voice is. Read a couple of articles, don't, don't fret about it and think, oh my god, I have to read all this information, but um, read a couple of articles that maybe are in the similar to you because there's nothing worse either than pitching, pitching something that has already been published a month ago. It's embarrassing and it's a straight up rejection. So we've already done that article. Some people, some places will just ignore you. Other places will get back to you, maybe give you a little bit of feedback. They're the best places. And they'll say, we've already pitched this article. You straight away go, right, <laughs> damn it. <laughs> then you move on to a different publication. Maybe you have to tailor the article to suit their voice or suit their um, audience, but at least you know where to go from there. Make the editor's job easier as well. If you're, if you're a reader of the magazine and you go, okay, they're missing an article on outdoor um, education or outdoor 
uh, camping experiences, write about it. And maybe you even say that in your pitch. Hey, I'm an active reader of your magazine and I notice that you don't have this. If you acknowledge the fact that you read what they put out, it, it makes the editor's job so much easier and it makes you, makes you look like you're actually interested in what the publication publishes. There's nothing worse than just throwing your writing out there, hoping it will get published. It doesn't work like that. Really tailor it down and focus on publications that suit your writing and suit what, you're, what you value as well. And editors will love you for it. You'll form a great connection. And they might even tell you, we loved your article. Can you write us another one? Can you write monthly? And then, hey, you've got yourself a monthly subscription that you can, monthly submission, sorry, not subscription, monthly submission that you can write an article every month to this magazine and earn, I don't know, a couple hundred bucks. It's great. <laughs> On money, the last thing I want to talk about is pay. So there's this general idea that writers don't get paid a lot. It's true. We don't. And it probably won't change. I don't see it changing. But at the same time, don't get disgruntled from that. Write for fun. Don't quit your day job just yet either. But write about your experiences and your life and submit it in. Um, in Australia, we have a pretty good pay rate. I'll link the website below what the standard pay rate of writers and freelance writers in Australia should be. This is why I stay away from places like Upwork and Freelancer. They're, not only are they very American based, so by the time the conversion of the dollars comes over, it's not even worth um, writing it, but they don't have quality work. It's not something you can really put on your resume either. Unless you're the top of the top on Upwork from like scrambling down in the bits and like taking scraps, then there's no point. You're better off going straight for the big the big or the medium sized things because you have to believe in yourself that you are good enough to actually start doing this. That you don't need to start and get five cents a word or $50 for a thousand words. It's not going to be worth your time and it's not going to be worth the amount that you put into your article. I know for me personally, writing a thousand words is not only about writing it, it's about proofreading it, it's about editing it. It's about finding the right voice for that particular article. What does this audience want? What does this audience read? What is this audience interested in? Do I have to be a little bit witty in this article? Can I put in a little bit of dry humor or is that just a big no-no? There's so much more work that goes on behind the scenes than actually writing an article and just sending it in for 50 bucks. So just don't accept jobs like that. Go for jobs that will pay you correctly and treat you with respect and treat them with respect in return. If someone's paying you $700 for a article, then treat it with respect. I'm getting paid for this. It's a privilege and treat it like a privilege. Do your best work and they will come back going, you are so good. Can we please get more writing from you? That's what happens. <laughs> it's just that simple. <laughs> So pay in Australia is pretty good. We're very lucky in this country um, and you deserve to have that pay rate as well. If someone doesn't pay you correctly, you can take that. You can take it further. It is your right to take it further and get the money that you deserve. There's, it's very, very um, frowned upon and illegal to not pay freelance freelancers, whether you're a freelance writer, freelance photographer correctly. Um, it's, it's a bad, leaves a bad taste in your mouth and you will go on and tell other writers, other photographers, other freelancers, do not pitch to that publication. They didn't pay me correctly. And then that publication will get a bad reputation and it will all go down from there because like I said, freelancing is a very, very niche and small market, especially in Australia. So you should make friends, not enemies. Be very careful. Okay. That is it from me. I hope that this was somewhat helpful. There's going to be lots of links in the description below to help um, people get started. I know that I really struggled getting started and it was the worst thing for me. So 
start small, um, start joining centres, see if you can find some time to join a workshop at night or a library meeting, just something that's going to kickstart your journey as a writer. Maybe even consider doing one of the courses on the Australian Writers' Centre, listen to their podcast, be an active reader. Instead of going, going on your phone at night, turn it off. I don't even have my phone in my bedroom anymore. Get it out and read a book or read an article. If you're going to pitch to a place, read their magazine. Do, do all the things, be happy, go forth and prosper. Good luck. <laughs>